a spiritual awakening. We start understanding just how important our attention and our focus is. But with that, we start understanding that we create with our emotional attention as well. So today, it is my honor to explain to you how we create in this reality with louche. Louche is a term coined by Robert Monroe, who in his out-of-body astral travels had discovered that our energetic and emotional energy is some sort of substance that is vied for and fed even upon and used in order to create. So what we see in mysticism as well is this term called louche used in different contexts and in different ways. So mysticism also knew, even though they didn't call this substance louche, about this creative emotional life force that is competed for in order to create realities through it. And so what louche is, is our emotional energy, but not just anything. Our emotional energy that is used to create. So when we enter into this physical experience, I want you to imagine that we have like a pipeline from source to us, the avatar of source in this reality. And this pipeline is the emotional fuel that comes rushing in based off of desires, based off of whatever th we find pleasant and whatever makes us feel good. And essentially, love in its emotional form. And all of this louche can get tapped into and turned into different forms. It can get turned into lower gradients of this creative life force and it could get turned into even hostile forms of this creative substance. So what many people know, if they know this term louche at all, is in its negative context. But they don't know that louche is actually just creative life force. It's not just creative life force. It's the creative life force that acts like a pipeline that we use to create reality with. So louche is creative energy that then comes rushing in and then attracts in our physical reality things that we call forward, experiences that we call forward. Whatever we want to call forward is manifested through that louche. So it's that feeling good state or that desirable state that then gets used to create. Because in this age, what we know very well now is, is that thoughts create reality and feelings create reality. So thoughts and feelings together, as well as actions, but thoughts and feelings are the non-visible, non-physical form of manifestation. And then actions, in the physical realm is the physical way that we create. But today I'm talking about the non-physical way that we create. And that is through creative life force known as louche. Emotion is energy in motion. And louche is that energy that's in motion. The first and original form of louche exists outside of our dimension and outside of our earth realm. Monroe called it prime energy because it is the original source of energy that all other forms of energy come from and therefore all other forms of emotion come from. When Lush is in its prime energy form, it is pure life force. It is pure creative essence that we call love. So before Lush is fed off of or turns into a negative emotion, it is simply the prime energy of love. Louche is emotional sustenance. No different than how we need physical food to nourish our physical body. Louche is energetic food to nourish the whole universe, to nourish ourselves, to nourish each other, and to nourish other beings. The food chain does not end with us. It goes on, but we cannot see what that food is because after us 
it becomes non-physical. It becomes spiritual. It's energetic, and that is louche. It is the fuel that nourishes, and it is the fuel that is sustenance. This is the deepest secret in all of esoterica, that emotions are sustenance. Everything is done for the purpose of acquiring louche. When you don't know why something senseless and cruel is happening, or you think it's all just greed, the deeper meaning behind it is louche. Because louche is sustenance. It can either be positive sustenance or it can be negative sustenance. But it is no different than a battery. It gives us life force and energy to this whole universe. Our job in this lifetime is to learn how to properly nourish ourselves, how to correctly give and receive this emotional sustenance in a conscious way. This is how higher density beings who are beneficial exist. They are nourished through symbiotic energy and through reciprocity. An energy exchange done through equal give and take with loving intention. We are meant to learn how to do this as well at our dimension of reality. But the current state of energy exchange is not symbiotic. It is done through an emotional supply chain that you can think of like a hyperdimensional narcissist. So it's a food chain, but it's a food chain of supply rather than equal give and take. So louche can best be described as the visceral form of love. That's what it is in its most highest expression. And in its lowest expression, louche can be used to create reality through fear. So no matter what, I want you to picture us as walking around as these valuable, valuable storehouses of creative life force. And each of us have this creative life force and we can manifest with it. We can call forward what we wish to experience, what we wish to manifest through this visceral, emotional substance of love called louche. But if we don't know that, then we can actually have it preyed upon and we can have it redirected. And when people know about louche and we don't know that we're just this walking, talking louche, that can be taken advantage of, and it is. So how we know louche most popularly is through its negative side. And through its negative side, what louche is, is when a being's attention and a being's experience is focused upon something fearful, something scary, something hostile. And when you have a whole collective using their creative life force, using their louche to be directed upon very fearful, very scary, very hostile timelines or realities or just things that we're chronically focused on, that we're chronically feeding our attention on, that louche of all of us is used to create and manifest negative timelines or at least negative timelines to us if they're scary and fearful and we don't want to experience them. So louche is the most precious commodity in all of existence from this point of view because now it's what's used to battery up life force, to give manifestation, life. So there's the non-physical realm. And then what Lush does is just spit it out into the physical realm as a creation or as something that is manifested. And when you have whole collectives that are using their creative life force to be focused upon and give their attention directed and funneled into certain fearful scenarios or certain conflicts that go chronically on in the physical realm. That's disempowering and disempowering our own life force that is being used to manifest. We are giving away 
our creative life force. We are manifesting without even knowing it by having all of that fear being used in its emotional form to create. So that's very important to know about Lucius is that it's emotional content. It's energy in its emotional form. And when you can turn that energy in its emotional form into the flavor of fear or into the flavor of anger or into the flavor of hostility, what you're doing is manipulating creative life force. You're manipulating Lush to be used just like you're battering up something, giving power to it. You're using Lush as a battery. You're using Lush to juice up and manifest something. And so when it comes to Lush, that's the most important thing that we need to understand. It's that it's how manifestation gets created. So it's how things become created through the emotional sensation. And that emotional sensation can be manipulated. This is also why I don't really have an issue with channelers within this age that are contacting and preaching messages that are super positive because even though they're putting people into a very depressive state of delusion and spiritual bypassing, the mixed bag that the pros at least of this is that they're reconnecting humanity with their louche and the connection between human consciousness and louche in its purest form of positivity and love and creation and all of those fun things has been disconnected. So it's hard for us to actually tap into the infinite potential of manifestation and to call that life force in and actually feel good and to feel empowered and to feel positive and then create from that powerful space. So it's like I said, a mixed bag where, yeah, a person falls into depression and delusion, but also it's a little bit of worth it if we're looking at the long term, reconnecting humanity to their power through Lush. So just be careful. Lush is actually behind our whole ascension process. So part of spiritually evolving has to do with also being able to manifest more positive versions of reality. And how we do that is whether we know it or not, it's through Lush. So what we have is a part of the awakening process and a part of our spiritual evolution is tapping into the fact that we are a creator being. That's what we are. There's so many different titles and labels and things that are placed upon us that we lose touch with this and that at the very end of the day, we can call it source, we can call it whatever we want, the universe, universal consciousness, but we are creator beings navigating eternity or imagination. And with that, we're creating our own spiritual evolution. And at a certain point of evolution, it has to be self-created. That's the whole point. And not self-created, meaning a hyper state of independence, you do it on your own, but meaning that you're able to acknowledge and awaken deeply to this truth of us being creator beings. So what we are at our very core is loosh. We're thoughts and emotional creative energy that is used to produce or to manifest. And so a part of our spiritual evolution is stepping into the fact that we can manifest and we're doing that constantly, whether we know that or not. But the more we're conscious of it, the more we can direct our attention into whatever needs to be healed, of course, and into expanding our awareness, which includes both negative and positive, but also being able to master the sensation, the emotional content of what we do want to experience and what that does feel like.
This is so powerful that in Robert Monroe's work, what he had documented was that Lush in this high potential, high creator being manifestation form is also called escape velocity. And escape velocity is simply the energy that fuels and propels a being out of the thick and heavy density of the third density, out of the karmic wheel of samsara, out of the birth and death and birth and death reincarnation cycle of spiritual amnesia in the earth life system. And it's all done through Lush, which in this form, in this highest expression, is love. And when love is being cleared away from all of its impurities and everything that is not love being cleared away of those blocks, what you'll have left is that pure essence, that pure emotional content that is fuel. And when it's not used as fuel consciously, it's hunted, preyed on, and harvested by aliens. So, Lush is the sensory information, the visceral form of love. And that love can get turned into different gradients, different textures, different flavors, and it could get lowered in frequencies. So every emotional state is louche. It's just how strong of a louche that is. What's that louche used for? The best example of louche in its most heightened hypervigilant state is when we are put in very pressuring and stressful life or death situations. And that's typically how our louche is used and funneled into create timelines right now. It's used by pressuring it, tapping into that louche, and then maneuvering it, manipulating it into stressful and hypervigilant environments, making us create reality from that state. And the best example of what I could give is if we're looking at a mother who has enough strength to lift a car in order to save one of her children. That is the perfect example of how our creative life force is put into a state of immediate distress, intensity, and fear in such an ecstatic state that it produces louche. And that is food. That is straight up the food of the cosmos. And so what you have is that state. And let's say it's not done in an admirable way, such as saving our loved one, but that we're put in certain scenarios and certain things get induced into our reality to constantly produce that level of squeeze to where we're squeezing the life force out of us to produce those states of intensity and those states of distress constantly fueling and fueling negative versions of reality. And so what we see is that louche can be fuel for love, but louche is straight up used as food. It's a food source, no different than how when we look at our own food options in a day, we go, oh, do you want Italian? Are you feeling like Chinese food? Do you want Italian food? Do you want Mexican food? You know how we get into the feeling for certain tastes? That's exactly what louche is. There are certain beings that really like that flavor of fear. There are certain beings that really like that food taste and that flavor of distress as though we're constantly put in a state of life or death. And there's beings that like that food taste of sorrow, of despair, of being chronically depressed. All of these are just like our different food options in a day where it's like, oh, I'm craving that. Only imagine that you just really like one flavor and you stick to that one flavor of fear or of despair or of loneliness or of sorrow. And then what you have is hunting and harvesting that from beings. And so that's why healing is so important in this age is so that you're not loose. 
Now, when Lush gets converted into a negative form that is fed off of, I want you to imagine this process like you are grilling a vegetable. You see how you are preparing it in this way so that it is going to taste a specific way? That is the same as what I'm saying when our louche is being converted to a negative form to be fed off. Our prime energy or life force is prepared a certain way. We can call that cooked a certain way or converted in a certain way. So how does our louche get fed off? Well, first off, it gets converted by us. We do it. We do it on accident anytime we have a strong intention that is attached to a negative emotion. That is the equation for Lush to be fed off. It has to be our original prime energy, which is what I'm calling a strong desire or a strong intent, that is then infused with a negative emotion. If it is only a strong desire or a strong intention, that is not negative. Desire and intention are not negative. They come from our higher self. It is when that strong desire is attached to a negative emotion. Perfect example would be revenge. The strong intention is infused with wrath. Now, it is absolutely normal to experience negative emotion. Please do not suppress your emotions. But what makes it louche is if we are not aware of this whole process of conversion. And so we just unconsciously emit all of this emotional sustenance out into the ether with no awareness that it needs to be embraced. It needs to be seen and accepted and given our unconditional love. Anything you don't become aware of and radically embrace is held outside of the love of your light and therefore it can be louche. The second way that we emit louche is not by our own innocent lack of awareness. The second way is by being intentionally manipulated to prepare our energy or convert our energy into a negative state so that our louche can be funneled into creating chaos, trauma, and distress. This is also demonstrated in the occult phrase, order out of chaos. Because in this reality, like attracts like. So what we have is we get carried into this reality with not just the present moment. What we have are spiritual miasms. These are distortions within our energy body, or what I call our etheric template. And these miasms are passed down. They're carried within our energy field that don't represent uh, this present moment, that represent the past distortions, the past ways that our lineage got mutated and turned and distorted into certain forms. Kind of like if you see depression at a very chronic and severe rate passed down, or if you see rage and wrath being a signifying trait of our certain emotional experience. And so what you have are these spiritual miasms. Now, if you'd like to know more about this, you can watch my video on it, how to receive energy upgrades. And in that I go all into spiritual miasms. But with this, what you see is, is that since like attracts like, there's certain beings that have the taste buds and flavors for those different levels of negative emotions. And that's why when we heal, we're not only healing our energy field of those distortions and therefore that bond, that attracting affinity with certain negative entities. But we're also healing our own taste buds. Even if we didn't start it, even if it wasn't just us who developed them within this lifetime, we're healing our own taste buds. And when we heal our own taste buds for healthier choices in our own life, that's supposed to have some sort of positive results and that's supposed to make us feel more clear, more empowered, feel better. And those are all healthier choices that lead to healthier taste buds. We no longer have certain taste buds for the same type of woundedness or pain. And so that also is how we heal our own ability 
to create consciously. Now, if you'd like to know more about this unhealed state of how our taste buds attract certain things, you can watch my video, How to Deal with Energy Vampires. Because one could look at all of us as being in a state of some sort of energetic vampirism if we don't go through a process of consciousness, if we never become aware, because then we never heal our taste buds. In an unhealed state, we have flavors and taste buds for pain and for trauma. So we actually get a rise out of inflicting pain or trauma or distress or confusion or despair onto others. And then we like the way that that life force feels and how that tastes when we consume it. So we put people into those hurt, comfort, or despair, conflict, or stressful scenarios. And that's all energetic vampirism. So as we heal, we heal our taste buds for pain because we fuel ourselves off of love and we fuel ourselves off of better feeling emotional states. And then we have a reality where we don't do that to others and that's something we no longer resonate with being done to us. And so with that, we have better, healthier options that shift our point of attraction. So when we become aware of how we carry louche and how the unconscious ways that we gain louche or the unconscious ways that louche is being harvested from us, now we can become more aware of that and use consciousness as the transmutating factor because becoming aware of this is what transmutes it. And when we transmute it, now we're transmuting it into higher expressions, higher vibratory frequencies. So we can literally heal our taste buds into more loving, self-loving, and loving of other selves' ways of exchanging energy. This creates a symbiotic effect. And it's the symbiotic dynamics that is when we are mastering love. And it's this parasitic dynamic is when we are in our hurt, traumatized, wounded, and painful expression of louche, and therefore attracting that also into our experience through other beings. I hope this has helped you not become food. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakening. See you next time.